I'm tired, the crickets are out there chirping, that means it's time to go through a few examples of disjoint and not disjoint sets. Remember that if two sets have no common elements, they are disjoint. The idea of disjoint sets is not too complicated. Again, it's just two sets having no common elements, but it will come up again and again as we continue to study different topics in mathematics. So let's see some examples. Quickly, what do disjoint sets look like in a Venn diagram? Again, disjoint sets have no common elements. So in a Venn diagram, disjoint sets look like that. There's no overlap between them. They have no elements in common. For example, you might have, you know, sets don't just have to have numbers. So you might have fish and apple in this set. And then in, in the other set, we might have something like, uh, this is gonna be bad, but something like cat and uh, cheese it right? Those are disjoint sets. They got nothing in common. All right, so let's look at some examples that don't highlight my artistic skills. Here's the set containing one and two and the set containing two and three. Are those sets disjoint? Did you say it? Did you say the answer? You know the answer. Are they disjoint? Well, you have to ask, do they have any elements in common? In this case, yes, they do. Two belongs to both sets. So they do have at least one element in common. So they are not disjoint. They are not disjoint because they do have elements in common. Now, we know a set operation that gives us the elements common to both sets. Do you remember what that's called? It's called the intersection. If we take the intersection of this set that has one and two, we intersect that, that's the intersection symbol, with the set that has two and three, this will give us the set containing the elements that are common to both sets. In this case, since two is the only element that's in both sets, their intersection is the set containing two. Since the intersection is not empty, that's what means these sets are not disjoint. By definition, since disjoint sets have no common elements, their intersection will always be empty. So that's another way to think of disjoint sets. Two sets are disjoint if their intersection is empty. The intersection of these sets is not empty, so they're not disjoint. They've got an element in common. Next example. These ones are a little weird looking, right? We've got this set that has a set containing A and B and a set containing A. And we're wondering, is it disjoint from this set, which has A, B, and the set containing B? What do you think? Indeed, they are disjoint. Let's look at the elements of this set and compare. This set has A. This set does not have A. The only elements of this set are also sets. So this set does not contain A. It contains a set that contains A, but it doesn't contain A. This set contains B. Again, this set does not contain B. It contains a set that happens to contain B, but B itself is not an element of the set. And then this set also has the set containing B. That's also not an element of this set. This set has the set containing A, and it has the set containing A and B, but it doesn't have the set containing B. So they are disjoint. None of the elements in here are in here, and so of course none of the elements in here are in here. So their intersection is empty, and I'll put a check, they are disjoint. All right, here's a weird example. Consider the empty set and the set of real numbers. Are they disjoint? Well, again, to be disjoint means that the two sets have no common elements. Obviously, that's a little weird to think about because the empty set has no elements. It's a little more obvious, though, if we go back to the intersection. Remember, another way to think about disjoint sets is that sets are disjoint if their intersection is empty. 
What's the intersection of the empty set with the real numbers? I'll write that here. The empty set, that's a really bad bracket. The empty set intersected with the real numbers. Well, the empty set intersected with anything is the empty set. And so it seems pretty intuitive that of course, the empty set and the real numbers, no, they don't have any elements in common because of course the empty set doesn't even have any elements to begin with, let alone have any in common with the real numbers. So yes, these are disjoint sets. And in fact, the empty set is disjoint with every set, including itself because it has no elements. So it can't possibly have any elements in common with any other set. So again, the empty set is disjoint with every set, including itself. Last example, you can do this one, natural numbers and the integers, that's what these are. So the natural numbers, this set contains one, two, three, and so on. The integers, that contains all of these, as well as zero, as well as the negatives of all of these. Well, so I just spoiled it, I just gave the answer away. Are they disjoint sets? No, they are not. As I said, the integers contain all of the natural numbers. In fact, if we intersect these two sets, so look at the naturals intersected with the set of integers, well, zero and the negative integers are not in the naturals, but all of the naturals are in the integers, and so their intersection, the elements they have in common, is actually just gonna spit back out the natural numbers. So they are not disjoint because they have elements in common. Again, if two sets have no common elements, then we say they're disjoint. In a Venn diagram, disjoint sets look like that. They've got nothing in common. Sets that are not disjoint look something like that. They have a non-empty intersection. They have stuff in here that's common to both of them. No enough to see the haunts. Ooh, the Marriages and rows with the dead pedal blues To a meddling man who chalks his talks But I can't be the last to